Okay, TG story time. There were four of us playing a game of 3.5 D&D with a few house rules. Starting level 3. No level adjustment for plus 1. And all d20 rolls of a 1 where a fail on any check. And like in law and order the names and faces have been changed. So I arrived at my friend let call him John House for a day of D&D. We planned out this for a few weeks and everyone had prepare character. I got the drinks. Dug the pizza. And Tony. She got to pass since it was her first game. Now being the nice guy I am I built a lawful evil awesome monk who was just an asshole to everyone and would ask how much you going to pay me whenever asked to do something. This is importation to note. Trust me. Now John was DM and had built a range of some kind. Human. Doug built a fighter who could smash anything and Tony a tiefling rouge. Her chose. Now before we begin the chaplain a little background to our DM John. He liked to reuse his old characters as NPC in his chaplains. It fine most of the time, but there's some that should be left in the burning pits of hell. Now we gather around the table. Dimed the lights and set the scene. The music was slow and sounded like something out of an old horror movie. Which was probably why he got it. Welcome to Kellen Thrall. I can't spell it just sound it out. You are all in the town of Haven for one reason or another and have heard that the local guild is offering rewards for information on the raise in the local goblin population. They been attacking the local trade routes and cause a little more trouble than they normal. At this point we started talking among ourselves and figuring out how to meet up out of character. I'm at the guild seeing as I'm a member. DM approved. And I'll be at my table enjoying myself. At this time no one knows my end game or that I'm laying. Everyone gathers in and after a few minutes all agree to head out and scout for the goblin and hope to find where they're coming from. After a brief trip into the forest we ambushed by 20 or so goblins. We quickly killed them with 3 escaping to the south. Now hear the fun part. I passed a DM a note asking if I could dissemble the goblins and place their family jewels in a bag for latter. He asked why and I told him I was planning to sell them. He rolled his eyes and told me okay but after a few days it's going to smell. After returning to the town and collecting our reward of 104, we decided to wait till morning and travel south of our last encounter. The next day we started off. Me, Tony, and Doug. John yet to play his NPC ranger of a babysitter. Which is fine I do the same thing when I'm DM. Keep small groups from dying quickly. Yet again we encounter the goblins. But this time they had an orc with them. Now the plan was to capture one of the goblins and make it talk. This of course was ruined by Doug who charged in and tackled the orc and yelled. Can you smell what the rock is cooking as he slammed the orc into a tree and pinned it there. Meanwhile Tony and I took care of the remaining 32 goblins. By that time Doug had pinned the orc to the ground and was still struggling with it. Me and Tony both flanked them and waited for Doug to roll a successful pin. Once he did and with no planning. We both rolled and called out at the same time. Boot to the head. Everyone lost it and for a few minutes we just laughed. Once that was over we tied the orc to a tree upside down. For the lulls. And tried to wake it up. Sadly we had done so good at our rolls. It was out for the night. Or so the John thought. He said nothing short of smelling salts were going to wake it up. That when it hit me. Now remember that bag from before. Well it had been rotting overnight and was just getting good and smelly. I pulled it out and before we could do anything. John. Make a Ford save. Everyone rolled. Tony 1. You're puking your guts out. Doug. 1. You also throwing. Me. You guess it. 1. You've got to be kidding me. You're blowing chunks too. After that we all pinched our noses and I waved the bag in the orc face. It awake and failed it Ford save with a 2. To say the low save we're starting there was an understatement. At this point the orc started yelling. We asked John what it was saying. Who took orc as a language everyone froze and turned to their sheets. It was at this time I figure we were screwed. I do. Tony said holding up her sheet. She had wrote orc. Not orcish but it was fine. After a few back and forward note passing and her deciding to make a deal with the orc. His freedom for information and one other thing. We all agreed. She cut it down and then it punched my character in the jaw. When I asked why it was for the bag of shit I used to wake it up. 
After which we argue in character as the orc ran away, only to be shot down by John NPC who had come to give us the healing potion the guild offer us the night before and forgotten about. Ambush. 50 goblin attack. We quickly killed them and ran into a blue. Akira wizard like goblin. After knocking it out we question it only to find it was part of so legion brainwashing wizard army. And once again the argument about letting me kill it or letting it go between me and Tony character start. Now I'm lawful to the local laws of the land and fully evil when it come to kill those in my way. Tony however playing said, and her plan was to let it go and track it back to it hideout. Now I agree with that plan after she told me, so we let the blue go. DM rolled a survival check. When the goblin was just mulled by a bear, everyone froze but me who began to laugh and fall out of my chair as Tony said fuck we killed the bear and set up camp. The next morning he headed out and started back to the town. We had learned that wizard was in the mountain to the east of the town and not the west where the goblins and other things were attacking. After getting our reward and a level up, we restocked and headed for the tower in the mountain. A few encounter later and a few more level up the party seemed to be getting along. Save for a few time me and Tony would fight in combat over kills. It was starting to get to the point that the DM had the enemy poking at us to start an argument and give them the upper hand. By the time we reached the mountains we could see the keep at the top and had reached level 10. It was about noon and we took a break. Me and Tony headed down to the gas station to get more soda and John started cooking. As me and Tony talked on the way we came up with a plan. Now I'm not a fan of meta gaming but this was more like character development. No John like PvP. He loved seeing who built a better character. And he enjoyed it a little too much. We decided to keep up the hate and ever start to do bodily harm to each other character. Meanwhile our character were going to hock up at night. It was easy really. Tony would pass John a note telling him she was going to sneak into my tent at night and pull a prank. I wake in the morning to find myself prank in 1, 2, 3. We had our scapegoat. After lunch we started our plan. After a few more encounters and my new drunken monk and her master Rouge had had a few night of pranks we got to the keep. Now she was doing good for her first time playing a Rouge and we got through the maze of traps with ease. We reach the wizard. John. You enter the wizard chamber. You see a man in red robes with a staff waiting for you. Me. Knowledge check. 20 plus 10 John. You know he a red wizard of Fay. Now let me finish. He has a large crow on his shoulder. He seems not to have noticed you yet. Doug, is he saying anything? Yes he talking to his bird. He called it. Tina. Everyone froze but Tony. Who had never knew about the past game. In a large game with an old DM who quit because of this character. There had been 7 of us in the DM. John made a red wizard with a crow familiar and had kill every importation character fucked every plot point and then kill the group to and I quote, father his research. John, the wizard crow turns and yelled the fools are her master. I wanted to run but seeing as my character didn't know who he was I played along. Tony stay behind the down and hide. Me and Doug enter the room, our hands shaking over the d20s. John, gentlemen you've seemed to have reached my summer home. And my impressive me. Now where is that devilish tiefling I've been told about me? Bluff. She die on the last floor. The spy got her. Rolled. 20 plus 15 passed. Oh dear and I was so hopping to see what my last est test would do to her body. Well I guess I'll have to test it on you. At that point 10 supercharged goblins dropped from the ceiling and we began combat. We killed them all but were low on HP and lost our babysitter. We downed our last pots and ready to face off with the boss. By this time Tony had passed all her sneak, move, and high check while we battle the goblins and was 10 feet from the boss. Well I get you can't get good help these days. I'll have to do it myself. Me. Wait this catching everyone of guard. Me. What your end goal why do all this and like that I had him monologuing. John had written these down and with my luck knew where it was. He went on about his research and how once it was complete you old take over Thay. Meanwhile Tony made her last sneak roll and, 1, your chater trips and falls over at the feet of Clemore. Again sound it out, at that time I face palmed loud and hard. And it started. My character started with a smipple. Can't you do anything right and she follow with an argument about if we was a better fighters. And the argument sold. No bluff check. No nothing as both Doug and John watch it out biggest blow up yet. 
It was so convincing it thing John believe we were really going to start fighting. Me. What kind of rouge can't sneak Tony? What kind of monk get beat by goblins me? That it I've had it you're dead. Tony. Bring it. At this point to started our PvP. John was overjoyed and didn't bother to move his boss. Meanwhile Doug had moved back as Tony said she was stealing my haversack in the middle of the fight. She passed I failed. She then reached in and pulled out a bag. That bag and started to swing it around. I managed to dodge her attack and with fancy feet feet got right next to John boss who took her the next blow flat footed and was cover in a 6 month old bag of goblin wongs and balls. At which time me and Tony said make a ford save. Everyone was speechless as they put together what had just happened. I had lost a few HP to Tony and she had lose some to me but at the same time I didn't use end of my special or feet and neither did she. John rolled and the words couldn't have come out of his mouth faster. Fuck one he throwing up on the floor. A smile was on my face as well as Tony's who had though D&D was for nerds and we sat around in silly costumes say fireball or lightning bolt. I mean we do but that larp days. I figure it was only suiting for her first time to end the boss with a cock dagger. This one on me can't spell it. After which cheers and final fantasy music to declare we won. Everyone had fun and John who hadn't planned to end the champagne though was happy we had tricked him and was now planning a new harder champagne. It was about 5 and we had started at 8. To say Tony had a good time was an understatement and after the game she asked me to help her build a new character for the next champagne. On the drive home we pitched ideas about her new character and when we got to her house she asked me to come and copy over the books onto her PC. I told her it was going to take a few hours. Seeing as I have all the books in PDF. She told me she didn't mind. Now I'm a gentleman guys but you can figure out the rest seeing as what now going. I swear to god if she the one we're having a D&D theme wedding and everyone dressing up. Peace out TG. The end. All events were based on a true story and only the names and faces were changed for the safety and protection of those invaded.